everybody so welcome to another edition of knowledge graph technology showcase winter edition where i go through some of the cool tools and services that are out there so that you don't necessarily have to reach out to that salesperson unless you really want to all right and these are all my honest review these are not sponsored and if i miss something that you really want to see reviewed make sure you link it down below all right so today we are going to be talking about semantic arts which is a consulting firm that is very well known in the industry. They have been here for a long time. They have a lot of books out there, some link down below in the description if you want to go and check those out. And they are RDF and data centric. That's actually kind of their tagline. So if this sounds interesting to you and you need a partner in not crime for your Knowledge Graph project, make sure you stick around. All right, so today I am here with two very special people. You might know them from a few books, a few webinars, a few conferences. They're very well known in this space. So why don't you guys introduce yourself? Dave, you want to start? Sure, I'm Dave McComb, the president and co-founder of Semantic Arts. Uh, we are a, a consulting company that specializes in helping people implement knowledge graphs. And we've been doing this for 21 years now. Steve Case uh, from Semantic Arts. I uh, lead the uh, business development team and work with our consultant pool to ensure that uh, uh, the right resources are, uh, are are being met there. Yeah, and, and, and that's a good jumping off point. So I'll, I'll pose this to you, Dave. What What is the consulting space look like that you guys offer? I mean, what is this that somebody that is starting to get into Knowledge Graph would benefit from? We started selling enterprise ontologies, which was kind of nice. We were in our sweet spot. About six years ago or so, we, we pivoted to helping people with the implementation of a Knowledge Graph. Mm -hmm. so we, still, mm -hmm. we still help them design an enterprise ontology, but more importantly, you know, let's start getting it implemented and into production and delivering value. Well, and maybe let's start there. So you were talking about you're helping them develop an enterprise ontology. What does that look like? Is there anything that you all have? Like, what do you add to the <clears throat> to the mix that other consultancies wouldn't have? Well, actually, one of the one of the things we add is freely available, but we have a, a starting point. We call it GIST, which mm -hmm. is not an acronym. It doesn't stand for anything. It just means get the gist of something. Mm -hmm. um, and it was originally inspired every time we do an enterprise ontology, there were certain concepts that always showed up. There were certain concepts that are always ambiguous. There were certain mm -hmm. things that people struggled with. And just by iterating on that for over a decade now, we have okay. a, a starting point. There's about 140 classes in GIST mm -hmm. that are kind of the, the primitives that you pretty much need in almost any industry. And then, so we start with that and then extend that for the specifics mm -hmm. of the client. So you mentioned that this is open, but I actually think that's what sets you apart is you've developed an ontology based on all of that experience and exposure that you've had across the years that you've been doing this. And then you're making something freely available to give back to the community, to help with those standardizations. And what you specialize in is then, cause you already know it pretty well, cause you made it. Right. How do you extend it? How do you make it fit for specific use cases? And that I think is so special because like, let's just talk about FIBO for a second. <laughs> right? Ooh, I, so, I don't want to go on the record with this, but go ahead. So, <laughs> so uh, you know, we won't go into too, too, too much, but it is used primarily from financial institutions and it, it, it does have a large adoption, but a lot of people aren't using it as Dave mentioned. Um, and, and a lot of ontologies are like this. The, the, the people are modeling with it and they're playing around with it. And then somehow there's like the disconnect between getting it out into production. And FIBO is, is one of those that I think suffers from that a little bit, um, although it is great as a starting point. So Dave, maybe discuss that a little bit. Like once you have an ontology as a starting point, what are some things that people need to think about to actually extend it and make it usable? What, what a lot of other people do is just let's go do a proof of concept concept mm -hmm. or a POC as one of our clients used to call them. <laughs> um, but these these POCs never go anywhere. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. a lot of the FIBO things are proof of concepts. And mm -hmm. everybody says, yeah, that's pretty neat. But now, what do I do with it? You know, mm -hmm. um, so we actually the one thing we don't give away for free is our methodology. Mm -hmm. We have a methodology that goes along with GIST and a lot of other things. Um, and it's a we, we call it 
think big, start small. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it kind of marries the upper the enterprise ontology with an actual pilot, not a proof of mm -hmm. concept, but you know, you have to scope enough work to actually get something that they can't easily already get mm -hmm. and get it make it implementable. So a lot mm -hmm. of our work on ontology has been what do you have to do not to make it theoretically correct, but mm -hmm. directly implementable. There's always the there's like a group of engineers that are like no relationship database or bust right mm -hmm. <laughs> and normally uh, once I start to work with them I find it's just because they don't really understand it mm -hmm. so Dave how how do you guys as a third party coming into situations probably similar to this all the time how do you usually go about like smoothing the the way well one one piece of it is you know we have to find real sponsors, somebody mm -hmm. who has a problem to mm -hmm. be solved, not an experiment to be done. And <clears throat> there's a little bit of a leap of faith often, mm -hmm. you know, we have some conversations stuff, but the, but the pilot is meant to put some real data that they would recognize. So when you start following your nose and you actually see data that you recognize mm -hmm. and it's stitched together in a way that you've never seen it stitched together before, then all of a sudden all the lights go on, you can show your friends and, and mm -hmm. you know, now it makes sense. You actually, I think, have a book, right? I say that knowing you absolutely <clears throat> have a book. So do you want to go well, into that a little bit? Like, what is all of this about? I do have three books. Several years ago, I wrote one called Software Wasteland. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a call to arm. It was, it was sort of a wake up call for people because I think people are sort of sleepwalking past the problem that they're creating. Mm -hmm. that this this business of every time we have a business problem, let's go implement another application and and not noticing that, oh, by the way, that just brought another arbitrary data model, therefore mm -hmm. silo. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, most of our clients have thousands of silos mm -hmm. and they wake up in the morning and they go, where did all these silos come from? <laughs> well, you built them, you implemented yeah. them. They come from your habits. So anyhow, that's what Software Wasteland is about. And, and the data centric revolution is, you know, how to how to get started thinking about a way forward. Dave, you mentioned that, you know, back in the day, nobody was biting. And now it's like everybody is clamoring because, as I say, knowledge graph is sexy now. It's like, yeah, but do you I almost yeah. feel like do you actually need it, you know, mm -hmm. in certain situations? That's that it's it's a good place to be when you have to try to talk people out of it mm -hmm. <laughs> sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, let's say um, you're a, a brand new manager to, I don't know, a finance team and you have learned about Knowledge Graph and you're like, this sounds like a, a really interesting use case for finance, but I don't really know how to even talk to those uh, advocates or how to find those advocates. Are there any uh, tools or things that you guys even offer on, on that side of the house to actually help with that, uh, that buy-in process? Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I think, I think actually, I mean, what we do oftentimes is just have sessions, workshops, if you will, mm -hmm. with the clients to just understand their, their business and what's mm -hmm. going to surface out of those conversations is mm -hmm. some of the compelling problems that they're challenged with, with their data environment right now. And oftentimes that leads to what we call competency questions, which mm -hmm. in essence are people think of those as business requirements, but they're associated with a certain, you know, data sets. And as, as you merge and marry those data sets together, it's going to really, you know, be more impactful for them mm -hmm. to make some decisions and and really achieve what they what they weren't able to because of the, the fact that they were in, you know, a structured or an unstructured uh, situation or in, you know, a different format. And, and this allows them to really capture the essence of what, you know, knowledge graphs and semantics offer. And I love that. So uh, I, I, I don't know if I've coined it, but everyone seems to think I have. It's the data therapist, right? Like you're mm. you're the ones yep. that come in and you yep. lay everyone down on their on your little couch and you say, okay, how does this data make you feel? What do you mm -hmm. want it to invoke in your business, <laughs> right? It's like right. you're that data therapist. Um, right. Once again, and I talk about this all the time. Um, so that's that's great, and I love that approach because and and this is where I'm talking to the audience. Not all consultancies do this. The folks that we're talking to here are are very much standard based, data driven, making sure that they're going about this in the right way. There's a lot of other consultants that will not be on this channel because I don't agree with the methodology. And that is mm -hmm. we're going to do it this way and we're going to tell you how it's done. And it's very 
aggressive and just going in and fixing things. But here's the thing, they're fixing it their way and you're paying them for that work. So they're gonna fix it however they want, not how you need it to be. So the methodology of like talking it out, being that data therapist that, that Dave and Steve are talking about is what you're looking for for consultants. So great job guys. Right. When somebody is uh, using the last six years service, right? So the actual implementation, mm -hmm. can you just walk through like what what do those services look like? If somebody is saying, yeah, we got a great model, maybe we used GIST and we, we think that we've got that figured out, now we need to implement. So what are the things that you help people with? Just to say that there is a, a process, it's typically an, an initial project is typically three or four months, mm -hmm. um, you know, with one or two of our consultants. Mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, the objective is to get at least a starter set of your enterprise mm -hmm. ontology mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. an initial pilot. Uh, and I do want to mention, you all have a conference kind of workshop thing that you do, right? So, mm -hmm. Steve, I know I've talked to you about this quite a bit. Do you want to maybe go into, like, what is that? Why do you guys do this? Yeah, this was a, a spawning aspect of getting a community together for mm -hmm. individuals that were wanting to take on the, the data center journey. Mm. Uh, and this, this coming year, we're going to split some of that um, into two sessions. The first is going to be more purely virtual and getting organizations that are on this journey. Some mm. are much more mature than others, but it's mm -hmm. going to help, you know, demonstrate to that uh, companies are, you know, approaching this. What lessons have they learned mm -hmm. and, uh, and what challenges have they uh, been faced with and how mm -hmm. are they, you know, adjusting along the way? Because we look at this as a, a very agile process too, mm -hmm. Because it's not, there's not just one fit for for any particular organization. There's mm -hmm. a lot of different technology stacks and and, and uh, you know cultural differences that are mm -hmm. associated with uh, the, those companies. So we're going to bring a, a a nice mix of about ten different uh, case studies, if you will, nice. and stories. Uh, and then the other half of that is going to be more of a face-to-face -face, uh, mm. aspect of truly collaboration at at a at a data architecture level. And mm -hmm. and Dave could probably talk a little bit more about those details. Over over time, we've sort of, both with our customers and also a lot with our partners and vendors and all that, <laughs> have discovered there's about 10 problems that need to be solved in the architecture. And they're problems that has, have historically been solved in applications. You know, mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. we write application code to sort out authentication and authorization and a little bit of entity resolution and some master mm -hmm. data management and a, some constraint man you know all that stuff historically was coded in application code in in mm -hmm. the silo so if you're mm -hmm. going to go to data centric you have to resolve those problems in the <laughs> architecture in a data drip mm -hmm. way <clears throat> so we're bringing together people you know we've been this is going to be the fourth annual one of these people come together mm -hmm. and they you know vendors present, you know, well, we have a solution for four of these 10 problems and here's what mm -hmm. it is and here's how it works and, or, mm -hmm. or enterprise architects come and say, this is how we're doing it at our firm. Just like Ashley, you were saying earlier, you know, knowledge graphs are not the, um, the, the do all, you know, solve everything. It, it, there's a lot of different pieces of the puzzle here uh, to the, to the data centric, uh, uh, um, you know, architecture that we're, we're pulling together. And so we think that there's a multitude of, of solutions that can, that can fit into, you know, help an organization get there faster. Mm. One thing I did want to ask, because I get this question all the time, I, you know, I get a lot of people that ask me, um, yeah, they are the advocate and they are the buy-in person at their organization, but now they need help with education and just teaching people what what's a triple what's a good what are the standards what does data driven mean is that mm -hmm. something that you guys also help with we used to teach a class mm -hmm. <clears throat> but we we found that it was it was not enough to to make someone proficient learning this stuff it ends up being more of an apprenticeship kind of program yeah we're doing a lot more you know just individual talks or or short, mm -hmm. you know, even presentations like this, they're more mm -hmm. exposure and, and yes. how to start thinking about that. Actually, we, we do have uh, what we consider our strategic advisory uh, services that right. is, is in essence, you know, really uh, talking about introductions to protege, RDF, 
nice. uh, owl and, and just, you know, getting a little bit hands on, but mm -hmm. is, is it really enough to get to a point where an organization can be D DYI? We, we, oh, we know that yeah. that isn't true, but, but we still yeah. offer that uh, as an initial educational starting point. I'd say that, you know, graphs are, are definitely on the radar screen for a lot of executives as well as chief data officers, but it's, it's how do you adapt that into your organization? Mm -hmm. That adoption and implementation process is critical. Um, and it's getting your your organization to you know see the value in that. I, I'd say that's where our services really fit that that mode, rather than just mm -hmm. you know here's here's a great knowledge graph, figure it out on your own. We're going to help <laughs> you you know through that process, nurture that along, as well as look mm -hmm. at the business outcomes that are really what you're looking to achieve, and try and marry those together. Yeah, you're true partners in right. in all of this. That's great. Yeah, and in some ways, I I liken it to uh, you know there's a lot of people who decide they want to climb a mountain, Mount Everest. Let's say, you know, think of us as Sherpas. We've been up and down the mountain many <laughs> times. We know where the crevices are. There are holes. There's danger. We have some aluminum ladders. You know, we be help. And, and we can't do it for you. You know, we're not yeah. going to climb the mountain for you. You have to get up there, you know, but we can we can certainly help. Uh, all right. So to close out, if folks want to um, contact you or find out more information about what you all do, how would they go about doing that? Steve.case at Semantic Arts, I think is a great place to start. Okay. We, we also do we also do have a contact page uh, where they can, yeah. you know, put a little bit more of, about their their challenge. Um, mm -hmm. as well as uh, subscribe to our e-newsletter that comes out every monthly just to get, keep abreast of the trends and, and what we have going on and some of the events that we uh, uh, will be promoting. 